Well, hello everybody. Today is Sunday. Just got back from a uh, great day of hanging out with my wife and the dog. And we were out on a date, having a good time. So now it's time to work on this thing. I'm not clearly dressed for it. I don't want to get this shirt dirty. Um, so I'll change shirts. And then I'm pretty sure we're going to do some brake stuff. More than likely, just mount the master cylinder in this location. Um, I really want to make, I got to cut this off and fill these holes. So what I'm thinking about doing is making a plate that goes across here for a little more stability. And then I'll probably tack in and weld a plate because the master is going to mount like this. And that's a giant hole. I could super redneck it because I am. Um, and just mount the master and mount the slave and have a giant hole there and I don't really care. Uh, and drive it around like that until I decide to actually do something different. But, because uh, I am in the habit of making stuff work and then driving it and working the bugs out of it. Same when I build a motorcycle. Before I ever paint or do anything like that because it always happens. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You get a car built, you would never test drove it, and you drive it and you go, Man, I wish I would have done this different. I wish I needed to change that. But you got everything painted or powder coated and you don't dare touch it. So you just live with it and it annoys you the rest of your life. Or maybe you're not crazy like me and that doesn't happen. But that does happen to me on every single vehicle I build. I always think I should have changed this. So this car is going to be no different. I'm going to put it together, do all the stuff I wanted to do. Not 100% finish it. That's why this thing is all done in a bomb can. That's right, this paint job is all done with uh, what we call shushu cans. And uh, over, it needs body work, like seriously. Um, some there's like a reaction to some of the primer and some of the stuff that was underneath it. And so I have little bits and pieces here to fix. I actually took all this down to the metal and prepped it so it's not going to rest again. But I really want to cut all this out and I'm going to use... Um, I've been using this fiber gel stuff. It's a bondo with the fiber gel and it seems to work uh, pretty good structurally. So I'm going to probably cut all this out, redo it, and any of the small little pinhole stuff like this that I really can't get to and I don't want to chop in here, I probably will, you know, it's already, I'll probably take it back down to the metal, put that stuff in there and give it up. So it has some structure. This I'm not filling with fiber gel and this I'm not filling with fiber gel. I'm going to actually replace this, cut this out cut this out but you know to fill it i want to give it some something or i might end up just using like you know just a really thin coat of filler because i might actually turn out to be decent at this metal work when i do the patch panels down here uh yeah i'm probably just going to use that filler after i patch it because i'm real bad at it but like this area here i don't know if you guys can see this but that's you know it's pretty bad um, so I'm going to mic, uh, change shirts, mic up, and then the sound will all go back to mono because apparently my mic system is, uh, mono. But you only know that if you're wearing headphones or you have a really good stereo system on your TV and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, back in a flash. Well, that was easy. Um. I gotta go through my mess on my table. Yes, I have to wear glasses when I'm looking really close. I've got a sale on those. I'm just learning. I need glasses when I'm up close. So like when I was turned 40, it was like, I used before that I could see like right here really close. And then all of a sudden it's like right here when I turned 40, the next year, the next year, the next year, the next year, the next year. Oh, there it is. Now I can see fine. That's what happened. Uh, let's see. Duracell batteries, because I have an addiction to batteries. Got this new camera from my buddy. Dual screens. I'll be putting that in the 5.7. And I can adjust the camera angle front and back. So you guys can see two cameras. Me shifting and whatever I'm about to run into or whatever I'm racing. Or Mom, I'm not racing. Ah, no, 
I probably will race on the street, never on the track. I mean, uh, you know what I meant. Always on the track. Um, well, that's a window switch. Tubing bender, hole sock kit, I've always wanted one of these. Step bit, I had to get a hammer. Such stupid little bins at the auto parts store, they're addicting. Okay, master cylinder. What size hole saw is that going to take? So, I need to open this up, this hole saw kit. This is hard to do with one hand. Ow, pain, teeth. What does this hole saw kit look like? Hole saw kit. Does it look like that? Let's see. Comparison. Wow, it actually does look like the photo. Includes three quarter, seven eighths, inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and three quarter, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, and five inch diameters. Okay. Who wants to bet that this one is probably the size? Um, I'm going to say that's exactly the size. Wow. Good guess. Now to build the whole sock kit. So much confusion. Oh, I see how it goes. Okay. So apparently, for those of you that don't know, this hex thing, can you see? Oh, there's light over here. I should turn on my light. I could turn my light on. Hold on. Hold, please. Hold. Technical. Technical lighting guy. Hold, please. Hold, please. Hold, please. Continue to hold. Continue holding. And we're holding. And we're holding. And we're not holding. Okay. That's pretty good light. Right, where did it go? Where? Did you see where I put it? Point it out if you see it. Oh, I found it. Stop looking. Stop looking. Okay. So that has like a flat and now one. I'm guessing this. I'm guessing it goes something like like that. Yeah. And then this nut, I'm guessing, goes on top of it like that. Okay, so the question is how tight should I make that? And should I find a center hole thing? Which I'm in luck. I got these step bits. So I'm guessing probably this one to make the right step bit for this. Because that's going through some deep, deep kimchi. Where is my knife? Can I? There it is. I found it. Stop looking. No, wrong one. It's a saw. Now that's a knife. Stab, 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 cut, open. All right. Ooh, there's a handy carrying case. Will I use that? No. Um, I probably should because I'll probably lose it in my toolbox if I don't. Okay, let's, let's set you up on some sort of mast thing over here so I don't have to, like, keep holding it because I'm getting lazy. All right. Here, I'll spin this off. We're having a good time. Aren't we having a good time? Okay, good. All right. Did I make you dizzy? No? Is it crooked? Maybe. Possibly. Ugh. 
if I made it worse or better. Probably worse. Okay, this. Close the knife, dummy. I have a whole toolbox over there. And notice I'm not going to the toolbox. I am going right here to my trusty sticky. Will it fit the size of this thing? No. Ugh. Okay, back to the toolbox. Ow! The next small one. You guys are probably like, don't do that, you'll never get it apart. You're probably right. I should have listened. One. Ah, yeah, got it. Why is destruction so satisfying? Okay. Let's say this, this long one goes here. This short, stumpy one goes there. And this one goes here. Hmm? No? Oh, nice. Okay, we're going to go here. Drill. Drill or impact? How much battery we got? Two. Two. Two dots. That's not going to work. Means we got to charge this thing. <clears throat> well, maybe it'll work. I got another battery over there on the other thing. Hold on, man. You guys go here and watch all the shenanigans. Okay. Ah, I got this here. Plug it in. Yeah, ooh, that was a spark. Plug this battery in. Nope, wrong way. Yeah. Alright, charging. How much has this battery got in it? Ooh, three dots. That's better. Sounds the same. Because that's always the best thing to do. No, it isn't. It never is. Got to move this Harley Davidson case out of the way. <sighs> Get this light over here. How about a light? Okay, I'm saying that goes there. How close? Can you guys see anything? Marker. A pen. I'll use this pen. Okay. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Let's bring it on down to reality. Okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go behind here and I'm going to draw a. It looks fairly level. Draw a center line. Right. right there. That's the center line? Oh, I can see the circle perfectly. Perfect circle right there. Yeah, I got it right there. That's my center line. Center line. And you know it's in line with these bolts, right? I'm going to say somewhere. I'm going to say it's right there. You guys are like, why aren't you doing it scientifically and all that fun stuff? Now I'm going to say, have you met me? say because nope 
slow speed. Oh man, part of my bumper fell. Kind of a whole size this. Kind of whole size that doesn't cut. Well, welcome back. I don't know if I'm gonna splice this one in or make another video or what, but um, I got it mounted in there. It's there, trust me. And I'm thinking that I'm going to mount the, let me see how close I can get you guys in there without, I'm thinking I'm going to mount the slave. Looking at the pedal, straight in there, it's more of the pedals like right there. So I'm kind of thinking I want to mount this right there. I have an inch and where's my tape? Let me find my tape measure. Stay there for a second. I got a tape measure over here. I'm trying to figure out the stroke of my I got a machinist rule somewhere. There's a tape over here somewhere. Where is it? What did I do with it? <sighs> if I wasn't such a slob, I'd be able to find everything. Oh, there it is. When it's too late and I don't need it. Okay, so I've got roughly... an inch and... Uh, an inch and a quarter of play in this stroke in this slave, more or less. So I got to figure out the height. That, okay, so do you guys understand pedal? You know, do you guys understand pedal ratio? Let's get into some math. You guys understand pedal ratio, lever ratio? Let me grab this. Uh, a wrench. Okay, so let's say this is my pedal. This thing is tape major. Ah, this thing is 12 inches long. So if I drop it down to two inches, if I put the hole on my pedal, let's say this is the pedal. This is the pivot point. So from the pivot point, the length of this pedal, if I put a hole at two inches, then my ratio is six to two basically. So then I have six inches of leverage, 12, no, it'd be 12 to two. That's really long. That's a lot of ratio. That's like a bunch of leverage. Most pedals are somewhere between seven and six and seven inches of pedal ratio. Or am I confusing myself here? Length of the pedal. Anyway, I'm trying to figure out as this thing swings from the pivot point, I need to this thing to swing inch and a quarter for a maximum stroke, inch and a half probably. So I got to figure out where on this rate on this lever do I want to figure out the most. If I have it right here, that's not very much pedal play, right? If I have it up here, then I have a whole lot of pedal swing before I'm where I need to be. So somewhere on my pedal, I got to find the right length of the stroke to give me close to full stroke because I want to be able to go and bottom out the master for bleeding. But it's only going to move like a certain spot. Plus I need some free play on the pedal. So where this goes, like an inch of free play or something, pedal movement of an inch. And if I'm up here and I'm going two inches, that will give me roughly six inches of pedal swing-ish somewhere. There's math involved. Um, I don't know how to get it across very well, but that's, that's what I'm trying to think about at this point is pedal ratio for the clutch. 
The other thing I have to figure out is where on this hole on my clutch pedal, as it swings in the arc that it makes, is it going to make the rod at the end of my pedal do some weird torquing action? When it starts up here and it swings across, is it going to do a straight shot? And ideally, your pedal, you want your arc to be as close to straight as you can be. It's like, um, like on a chopper making a foot clutch pedal. <clears throat> a lot of guys will go up to the edge of the pedal and they'll connect their rod for the clutch and when they move it they have like an on off switch on the clutch because this much movement moves the pedal this far versus putting it down as low as possible and you got a lot of pedal to feather when it moves and so that's essentially what I'm trying to build here is the same kind of setup because I don't want like an on off switch I don't want to be like on off with no being able to feather because that thing right there if I ever turn it up like volume's gonna be at like two or three when I'm driving it around even when it's full tilt if I ever turn this thing up to 11 and try and blow the bottom in out of this sorry Rob then I need to be able to not have an in and out box I need to actually be able to feather the engagement because I don't want to blow the Muncie out of it or the small drive shaft or this nine inch. Yeah, yeah, I do. I want I want the nine inch to go away, but not right now. So I got some mathematical stuff to think about, and I actually need to look at my pedal and see where it needs to be for the location of this because that whole this master may end up being like, come here, get over here. You see what I'm doing? Get closer. 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 Okay. Can you see that? Let me see if you can see that. You can see that. There you go. Get down there. All right. So I might find on my pedal height that if this is the pivot up here, that two inches down or three inches down or wherever it is, the master may end up being up here versus wherever my swing is. Because i got to figure out as I swing that thing the actual arc. And I want to keep it as straight, like I said, as possible. The minimum amount of movement. And I want this to be not moving this way either as it swings. So i got to, whatever heim joint, whatever linkage I built for this, there's science involved in here. i got to figure that out right there. So, the, I mean, it may mount up here. If that's the case, I need a bigger um, plate, which this gigantic hole I made over here you could drive a truck through that was complete butchery which is really covered up right now by the master cylinder so you can't see it is uh i don't know what i'm gonna do here i really don't i do not like the way they did this stop get it open <coughs> i do not like the way they did this at all i want to do something different but i'm not in the position right now to do any of that because while i'm working the bugs out I've said this before, I'd like to cut the firewall out of my other car and put it in here and actually make a good firewall versus this thing, which is totally fine. This will be fine. It'll be fine. It'll drive fine and nobody will know the difference except for this guy. Um, anyway, that's what I'm struggling with. And that's what happens when you're dealing with the mind of a lunatic or something. Uh, yeah, so I don't really know what's going to happen with that one. some math I don't want to mess with it right now at all I'll mess with it tomorrow which will probably be included in this video I'll be under there making a little some calligraphic calculations and stuff yeah I don't know what I'm doing anyway uh, yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing here. I do. I have an idea of what I'm, I know what I want to do, but like I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I mean, I do, but I don't. I know what it's going to end up being. I just don't actually know exactly what my next step is. Problem number two thousand and fifty-six, or whatever. Fifty. This is fifty-seven. So two. So where do I stick this? Do I stick it here? 
So I can reach under my slave and figure it out, which probably will end up happening with me. That means you need a little bracket or standoffs and bolt straight through, which I'll probably do standoff spacers. That's probably where it's going to be. It'll probably be upside down like this. So the line comes into it and out of it. But I'll probably mount it like that so I can reach there and grab it under the slave. Problem number two, three, or 67. <sighs> this goes in the front. Where am I going to mount this stupid thing? Next to it, under the slave? Probably under the slave cylinder. So I've got to actually get the slave cylinder somewhat mounted, and this is going to go down in there somewhere. Brakes. How important are brakes? Yeah, I know. Really important. I gotta learn how to whoa when this thing goes. Here's the other thing I got. That's how far out they stick. You know, with the new things. And these are 15 by 7s. They're not what's gonna be on the front of it, but you get the idea. I'm probably running them for a little bit till I get some 15 by 4s or 5s or 6s or 4s or already said 4s. Till I get that set up, which it'll be a while. I gotta convert my welder still. I got a roll of gasless wire. So much to do. So little time to do it in. It's Sunday night. My wife wants me to come hang out. That's probably what's gonna happen. So tomorrow is gonna be a big mess of brakes and clutch and all that stuff. I'll probably mock all this stuff up. And I'll end up probably fabbing some sort of bracket tap thing to cover all the holes and everything down the road. Or tomorrow. I really don't know. Oh, on a side note, I don't know if I mentioned this, but that intake manifold right there, I'm replacing. There was a Black Friday sale from Speedmaster, which I know people are like, oh, Speedmaster, not, I don't care. I don't want a polished new wind thing. This old vintage wind, I don't want to destroy by drilling holes and making it enlarging, cooling passages so I can run it on the street because it's a vintage drag setup. So this old blower is going to go on top of a new intake that's not polished, and I'm going to mount that up, and you'll see when that happens too because the blower and carbon are going to come off. Then I'll put that on and all that fun stuff, which will be really, really fun. Um, I don't know why I told y'all about that right now. Probably because I like to ramble. And Anyway, uh, tomorrow.